Welcome to Never Shut Up. It's your boy, Marcellus Wiley, who is plowing through it today for many reasons. Y'all can hear that coach's voice. Let me get my Jerry Tarkanian on right now. Y'all remember Tark used to bite that towel? Won every damn game he had, and he used to bite that towel. What you bite that towel for? The opponents need to be biting that towel. But, oh, man, we just got to get into it right now. Let's start off with what's up with that dude. Well, this voice is gone. Y'all can hear some of that. And y'all know that's just coach's voice. I'm out there balling. My pink eye don't die. It just multiplies. So now, my yeah, my son, MJ, he got a little puffy left eye, right? And everybody's hitting me up in the comments saying, damn, dog, why you look so Hollywood? Why you wearing the T.O. shades? It's indoors. Come on, you're not Jack. I'm not Jack. I'm Marcellus. And I got pink eye. <laughs> Again, I think. So I got to get over this. I don't know what the hell. It is bouncing around this house like some damn volleyball back and forth. So we'll get it fixed. All is good. Well, my voice is gone because I had two games to coach yesterday. And that was the semifinal game. And if we won, the championship game, right? Well, we are the champions, my friend. <laughs> Boy, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I shed so many tears. Not just because we're champions, because to be real, we, we're back-to-back champions now. Uh-uh. We've been in the championship the last three games. Uh-uh. It ain't that, y'all. This team believed, and I saw them actually improve on a championship team from last season. So you imagine you get these little kids and they thinking they already made it because they already won it. And I'm like, dog, y'all could get better. And literally the team we played in the championship last year and barely beat. Let me tell you how it went this year. We saved our best for last. We started off the semifinal game real slow, real nervous, over coaching. I'm guilty as well, but I wasn't as guilty as my other coaches. My other coaches were just nervous. I was guilty of not keeping them in check because all of a sudden they start implementing all this new stuff to the kids. I'm like, you master what you know. Do not try to go out there and do something different. Believe that you got here for a reason and how you got here is how you're going to get there, right? So my bad for not keeping everything in order. So our first two, three drives, we didn't score. Now, they didn't score either, but for the crowd and even for us, we're like, oh, this game halfway over. We ain't even up yet. And everybody start feeling it, right? Long story short, we end up winning that game 24-0. Kids clicked in. All our coaches, we all got in alignment, said, relax, guys. It's going to be okay. Trust in yourself. Then we go to the championship. Obviously, you're playing against a better team because they survive. Oh, so we thought. First game, first play from scrimmage, hand, hand the ball to MJ, touchdown. We end up winning a championship game 30 to 0. So that's 54 to 0 in our two playoff games for a championship. When we barely got by last season, we're basically the same team. All I got to say is love to those kids. They fill my heart full of joy especially when they believe. Believe, conceive, and you can achieve. Last thing is I have a golf tournament today, LA Chargers Golf Tournament, so I'm going to go out there and swing them, and then I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to DJ and host the tournament as well. So in the spirit of that, I am already getting pumped for our Friday Swagger Way. In the spirit of DJing, I'm going to hook y'all up with a kit from Pioneer, including these bad boys right here. Y'all see those? Can you? Oh, bam. These are expensive ass headphones. That's all I got to tell you. <laughs> these are some Pioneer DJs. I swear by them. These are going to be yours on Friday along with some other DJ and stuff. So y'all going to get all things that do basically on Friday swag away. Now, let's get into all things NBA, including something that the NBA doesn't want to touch just yet. Let me get my talk towel out of here. And Adam Silver thinks that jo- Ja Morant's punishment will distract from the NBA Finals. So guess what that means, y'all? You know it is harsh. He is coming down with the hammer. And as far as bad omens go, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver saying he's going to save sharing the results of the John Morant investigation until after the Finals because it'd be unfair to the Denver Nuggets and Miami Heat is pretty bad. Now, one, People got to stop with this narrative. It's a damn lie that players are playing in an actual championship will be distracted by how John Morant won't be able to play in the beginning of next season. They don't understand that 
We are playing in a championship. I'm Jimmy Butler. You're Jokic. You think I'm even consumed, concerned, or maybe even adept to the fact that you're about to suspend John Morant? And even if you do, do I care? So who's really being distracted by that? The fans constantly are talking about it right now. That's a distraction. Won't you put an end to the conversation and all the speculation? So I hate when these lazy narratives actually get through. The players are not distracted. The NBA as a whole is not distracted. A matter of fact, not coming down with a sentence, a judgment, a period at the end of the sentence allows the speculation to continue. Okay, so here's the full quote from Adam Silver. It was in response to a question about whether Jaws eight game suspension during the season was harsh enough and how we got here, right? And he said at the time he thought it was harsh enough. Why? Let me give it to you. He said, I thought about that. And Joe Dumars, who was here, was in the room with me when we met with Jaws. He's known Jaws longer than I have. Y'all catch that already? <laughs> he looking at Joe Dumars like, um, you knew him longer. Um, you was here too. So why y'all asking me? But I digress. Okay, so for me at the time, an eight-game suspension seemed very serious. And the conversation we had, and Tamika, hey Tamika, was there as well, felt heartfelt and serious. But I think he understood that it wasn't about his words. There you go, Adam. Like we here, we got a sentence, we got a judgment, but actions speak louder than these words. It was going to be about his future conduct. And I guess in hindsight, I don't know. If it had been a 12-game suspension instead of an eight-game suspension, would that have mattered? Mm, it seemed appropriate at the time. That's all I could say. Maybe by definition, to the extent we've all seen the video, that it appears he's done it again. I guess you could say maybe not. But I don't think we yet know what it will take to change his behavior. I'm going to stop it right there. Damn, Adam nailed the ending because he started off in the, the blame game. He started off like Kanye over there looking at Joe Dumars, talking about Tamika was there and all that. No, you're the commissioner. It starts and ends with you. You have the final say. What was beautiful about that is if I suspend him for eight games like I did, did anything change? I suspend him for 12. You think 12 is going to do it? So now we can't go small time. It has to be a big time punishment. Unfortunately, a hard lesson to learn if you're John ja Morant again in this respect. What do you guys think? How long do you think that suspension is going to be? I swear, I think it's going to be at least half the season. Why? Because so many people got involved in this conversation. And that's why I don't like the fact that they're not trying to put an end to it right now and move on. Just release it on a Friday, the dead time last Friday and move on. But instead, the speculation continues to circulate, not just with fans, but with brands, with sponsors, everyone plugged into the bottom line of the NBA. So I think right now in this moment, they're mishandling it. They should wrap it up like Courtney just told me about this topic. End it, but they don't want to end it right now, so I don't think it's going to be best served for the NBA, and it's certainly not going to be a great sentence to serve if you're John Morant. What y'all think? Half a season? That's where I'm at. Coming up next on Never Shut Up, oh, Stephen A. Smith out there getting his Deion Sanders on. He recruiting. Yes, he wants to recruit Shannon Sharp to first take. He said, quote, that is something I would support. Let's talk through that next on Never Shut Up on Brinks TV and Reese TV. Man, I'm over here sweating. Got pink eye, ain't got no voice. God, dog. <laughs> Welcome back to Never Shut Up. It's your boy Marcel Swiley thanking you for your viewership on Brinks TV and Reach TV and your membership, Wiley's World on YouTube, where well, somebody's going to wear my DJ kit, which includes these hella expensive, but they free to you, Swagaway. Oh, there's a better picture of it. Friday Swagaway DJ headphones, 2000 MK2s. Good Lord, I got love for your whole DJ kit for you because I got to go today at the LA Chargers golf tournament. All right, let's get into this story right here where Stephen A. Smith recruits Shannon Sharp to first take. Quote, that is something I would support. All right, so ESPN 
hasn't publicly rolled out the red carpet for Shannon Sharp, but seems like all their talent has. The latest step there seems Stephen A. Smith already, already recruiting Skip Bayless is soon to be former sparring partner. And I've seen some of you guys chime in saying you're watching the show and are amazed how they're still working together and nothing seems different. Like if you didn't know the news, you wouldn't know that they really have a beef or issue or they're going to depart from one another. Well, that explains a lot. Let's talk about it. The fact that nothing seems different, even though we now know things are not as good as advertised, lets you know how bad things are. If you have something bad with somebody and then you finally find out something's bad, things should look different, right? Because one, your perception should meet the reality that things are bad, but they have learned to be desensitized and to fake bad so long that even when you know it's bad, it still look good. Woo! That's the worst relationship to ever witness. You ever see your homie in a bad relationship and they look happy? You like, oh, damn, dog. That ain't good. So y'all got to catch yourselves next time when you get seduced by something that's bad. All right, so Sharp is expected to have many suitors. Duh. Matter of fact, we want him here at Brinks, damn it. <laughs> we take Shannon Sharp right here. Come right now. I want him to be on the show, damn it, in Wiley's world as well. I love that dude. And according to Smith, ESPN might already be one of them. Smith addressed Sharp's looming departure on his episode of his newly renamed podcast, The Stephen A. Smith Show. Ah, oh, he already switched it up that fast. All right, big dog. He said, I don't know what his plans are. I don't know what he's trying to pursue. I don't know what he's after. But if Shannon Sharp needs me, I'm happy to be here for him. And if that included him wanting to come on first take, the bosses at ESPN know that is something I would support. Now, Stephen A. Smith has also gone out there and talked about this at length, saying basically, I wouldn't want to co-host a show with Shannon Sharp, but Shannon Sharp is welcome on this show, kind of like Michael Irvin is, right? And Mad Dog is. They get their day. It seems like J.J. Reddick now has a day, obviously, because of the NBA, but they get their day with him. And like, you're the star of that day, but that's not your show. It's Stephen A. Smith's show and the carousel of characters. So interesting, would Shannon even be interested in that? Most of you guys probably say no, except Think about it. We don't know what Shannon's up to next. Is Shannon up to going to uninterrupted with LeBron James, his boy, his bestie, and then doing some stuff there at Spring Hill with LeBron, his boy, his bestie, and then have Club Shay Shay, which he now has full ownership of. Remember, I told you guys months ago that Fox owned that, and that was a part of the negotiation for the buyout to get his leverage, to get his money. That thing got million plus subscribers, gets millions of views every time. That's a lot of money that most talent does not own, does not possess. Most talent is living under the umbrella of the entity. Glad Shannon got that. So if you're Shannon with Club Shay Shay, which is a money maker already, and then you could go on Stephen A. Smith's first take and use it as a commercial and promotional arm then you could do more Club Shay Shay, right? So Club Shay Shay was a part-time job that was paying full-time salary. So now you can lean into it, do more of it. Everyone's open arms with you because not only are you a great personality, people respect your resume, but now with this story of how you and Skip departed, oh man, every single person is going to sit there and say, let's talk it out, Shannon, including Kwame Brown, I swear. People need to get over this whole ego sensitivity stuff and please invite the person that you disagree with. Invite the person that you have issues with. That's going to be the best television ever. So Stephen A. Smith is obviously recruiting Shannon, but in a part time role. Let's see if Shannon is interested in that. Other than that, we know their relationship. Shannon Sharp used to go on first take when Skip left to FS1. Shannon and Stephen A. So they have that relationship as well. So they all know each other basically is what I'm saying in this trifecta of Stephen A, Skip, and Shannon. Everyone's trying to guess where Shannon is going. To me, the smartest play for Shannon is to create an independent space, independent platform, 
have it open source. Make sure it goes to YouTube. Make sure it goes anywhere where people can check you out. Because then you can get all the peripheral, all the ancillary dough that comes from that. But then keep your hub. Keep your hub. And his hub is Club Shay Shay. And his hub should land somewhere in the LeBron James growing universe of sports and entertainment. You did all that talking. You almost fought for LeBron James one time at a game. It's time for him to fight for you, pay it back, use some of that grand sponsorship money he has, pour it into Club Shay Shay, have it open sourced everywhere, take the money that comes from that as well, and that check that comes from Spring Hill uninterrupted. To me, that's the master game plan. Matter of fact, I think that is the plan because ESPN, as great as it is, I don't see that for Shannon. I think that's just lateral right now. And he could have stayed at FS1 or negotiated his own show if that was the play. So now if you're not going to do it on that level, take it from me. I get it. This is what you need to do. Create your hub, broadcast it to the masses while still being supported. Shannon Sharp got a lot of options, but it seems like one seems like the best of all those options. Coming up next on Never Shut Up. Damn, I can't get enough of these sports media types. The homie Charles Barkley and Skip Bayless, they got real beef. <laughs> I mean real beef. And Charles calls Skip an idiot. And finally, Skip responds. That's what we're going to talk to next on Never Shut Up on Brinks TV and Reese TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Welcome back to Never Shut Up. It's your boy Marcel Swally. I ain't trying to get my voice all together, but I'm thanking you still. The voiceless are thanking you for your viewership on Brinks TV and Reese TV and your membership, YouTube, Wally's World. Where you going to get a DJ kit from who? Your favorite DJ? Capri. No. Uh, me. <laughs> yes. That dude hooking you up with a whole DJ kit. I ain't putting the whole damn kit up here on camera, but this is one of the highlights of it. Some expensive ass headphones from Pioneer. Got y'all, baby, on Friday. Swag away. All right, let's get into this story right now. Because Charles Barkley and Skip Bayless, they got beef, and I'm tired of counting it. But I ain't tired of watching it and hearing about it, right? But they have been going at it for years and years. All right, so we know Shannon got bought out from Fox Sports, and we know all of that story just covered a little bit of it last segment. So now, here goes Barkley on air saying, quote, I don't do social media, so I get all my information on Bleach Report. I read an article today. If you work with a damn idiot, they'll buy you out. And Barkley said it as he glanced around the room to make sure they were on to what he was talking about, right? Not so subtle approach right there. He said, I'm saying, I read it. And then <laughs> Chuck, 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 stop. You know Shaq. Shaq is the best at doing this. And that's my favorite role too, the instigator. Like, he ain't starting nothing. He just going to keep it going. Like, right? You know what I'm saying? And so he like, Chuck, 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 stop, stop. Which means, go, Chuck. Go, Chuck. I'm on with you. And then Barkley says, Shaq, it's not you. <laughs> it's not Ernie. It's, it's Kenny. But apparently, if you work with a damn idiot, <laughs> they'll buy you out. So I just want you to know, I'm open to the buyout. I didn't know it was that easy. Now, Barkley's been using Skip as a punching bag for decades, dog, like forever, even going too far, I even got to admit this, saying that he quote unquote kill him during multiple interviews over the years. All right. To me, saying that is almost the same as pulling a gun out. You know, some things you don't do unless you're going to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't pull this out unless you're going to use it. Don't say you're going to kill somebody, even in jest. I don't think kill ever goes to the jest conversation, even though I know he doesn't mean it. So I'm not being that sensitive. I'm just saying that ain't the energy we need on some pop biggie stuff. Like, let's just stop it right now, even in sports media. Okay, so now Skip laughed at Charles Barkley for accusing him of being sensitive. And he like, what? And so they going back and forth. Skip has his podcast. Obviously, Charles has inside the NBA. Here's what Skip had to say. Charles has been taking shots at me for seriously 20 years. 
I never care about anybody taking shots at me unless that somebody repeatedly says on national TV he would like to kill me. This coming from Barkley just completely unprovoked. I have never criticized Charles Barkley one time. I have never said anything personally about him. Okay, two issues with that. One, Skip knows that he does have an issue if someone takes the shot at him. Therefore, that's why no one who works with him, works around him, takes shots at him because they still wanted to work with him. So that's not true. We all know that. We got receipts of that. Actions speak louder than these words. The second part I have an issue with is that he's never said anything personally about him. It's interesting when you say that because I don't have the receipts on this, but by conjecture, I would just say if you're talking about someone professionally, the way Skip talks about people professionally, then that's going to be personal. Here's the case in point. I if Westbrook got a problem with him, say I'm gonna kill you. You can hear Skip say, well, you know, I've never said anything about him personally, but you have. Because by talking about him professionally and calling him Westbrook and then leading and bleeding those two lines of personal and professionalism, now that's my point. So uh, I think Skip right now is trying to win with a war of words, but is going to lose that battle. All right, so between their feud of all that, Barkley doing a little too much call, saying I'm going to kill him, and Skip not responding, but finally Skip's like, look, I'm up to it. Barkley always says that Skip is sensitive, right? That's his thing. I'm sensitive, but then Skip is like, look, I waited 20 years to do that, to finally say something, and now I'm so sensitive. I'm still laughing about that one. Not with Charles, but at Charles. So Skip, he kind of winded up. You know how them old school, like the little rascals, remember they used to wind their shoulder up and the three stooges, like old people who got to warm up before they fight. Skip is doing this with the shoulder. Like, I'm about to start punching back at you, Barkley, like some old Rocky right there. So you can smell it coming right now. So Skip said he won't be biting his tongue for 20 years again, claiming every time Barkley jabs him, he's going to punch right back, counter, which means there will be many, 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 many more conversations and back and forth on this between Skip and Charles and my theory is deep down Charles resents me says skip because I all too often see and say things that he wishes he had seen and said mmm okay so 20 years he didn't say anything personally about him but now gloves off because you've been punching too much gotcha skip but here's the thing you just said <laughs> you say things that Barkley doesn't want to say I don't know the person that is alive walking his planets like that. And ironically, a few months ago, Bayless admitted he envies Barkley's ability to say whatever is on his mind without fear or threats of being canceled. Because Skip is playing both sides. I think Barkley's going to win this one by punching straight down the middle. What do you guys think in this beef? How's it going to end? Coming up next on Never Shut Up, my favorite segment. You throw this up, and I throw this up, and you get Wiley's World. Can I twirl that around? Yes, Wiley's World and Wiley-isms. It's going down, man. Next on Never Shut Up on Brinks TV and Reese TV. Damn, I wish I was up in the yay. I'll be in that hype on them. Dang, boy. Welcome back to Never Shut Up. It's your boy, Marcel Wally, thanking you. Viewership, Brinks TV, Reese TV, membership, YouTube, Wally's World. Become a Wally's World member. Damn, the other way. Wally's World member today. Yes, I used to fail that. At the combine when they were doing those kind of tests, I was like, there's like, all right, depth perception and perspective. I need you to flip it around and then go that way. Like saying your yeah, ABC's backwards when you get pulled over. It ain't happening. It ain't good. All right, y'all. We're going to hook you guys up with this week's Friday Swag Away, which is, what is it? A new car. No, it's not. It's not Price is Right. It is <laughs> some new headphones that cost a whole lot, a whole DJ kit from the, my folks at Pioneer. All right, y'all. Y'all know my favorite segment. 
No, it's not Wileyism. Actually, it is. But it's also Wiley's world. So I got to bring in my man who helped build this, Mikey P. Mikey P in the building. Everybody come to the ears. You know he coming in hype. Let's see it. He coming in hot, y'all. <laughs> say it. Say it. Say it. Oh, uh, all right. All right. That dude. <laughs> <laughs> now I did. I did it because you asked me to. All right. I love it. Now. I love it, brother. All right. All right. I got you covered with some football today, okay? So, oh, okay. late last week, there's been rumors floating around about Jimmy G potentially not being able to play the entire season for the Raiders, okay? Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh is yeah. right. I hear Courtney in my ear. She is right. So, Josh McDaniels saying no anxiety on his end. Should he be concerned? And then we're going to talk about the next layer of this after that. Oh, absolutely should be concerned if he actually wanted Jimmy G to be his starting quarterback, which we all know he did. The hell? Like, you know what? My job now is to police the police. Because before, even when I was being on the panels and on the shows and hosting sports media, stuff just was getting out and just misleading the public. And these lies have gone unchecked for too damn long. Now I'm sitting here, somebody, I have no anxiety. Look, we all know as good or great as Jimmy G is, he's a good quarterback with great results. Be real. He's a winner. Jimmy G is always hurt, especially when you need him most. So you got to come into the situation already apprehensive because it's Jimmy G, right? He can't get right in terms of his health. And now you say you have no anxiety. What does that mean? To me, it's either A, you don't care about Jimmy G at all, so why'd you bring him in here? Or B, which I think it is, you lying. You do have anxiety about it, right, Mikey P? Yeah, I mean, Brian Hoyer is the backup, so I would have a lot of anxiety right now. If that guy's going to be my starting quarterback, you got two more rookies behind him. So, yeah, Brian Hoyer, he's still in the league. He is still in the league. Oh, 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 oh. Um, there's no better job security in the world than being a backup quarterback that's not good enough to start, but not sorry enough to be out the league. Like, just right there, that B minus dude. I mean, five, <laughs> six million for life. For life. Yes, Brian Hoyer going to be in the league. Hey, I'll hold a clipboard for that money. All right. But this is the funny part. So, this is. The next layer of this is Tom Brady's name is getting mentioned. And to the point where this man had to go out and say last week that he is retired, okay? But he's now a part owner of the Raiders. And they don't seem to have a good backup plan. Like, what are they going to do? They they could sign Cam Newton or somebody else, you know? Like, so is Tom Brady a logical replacement for Jimmy G at this point? He knows the system. Mm, and he might get that itch. To, you never know. Yeah. Uh, well, look, you're always going to have that itch. I got that itch right now, but I don't have the talent to scratch it. Like, my talent ain't going to scratch that itch. And Tom Brady's talent still can, in part, because at the position he plays, it's a lot of anticipation. They don't lose their arm. i give you a quick story. I played in a flag football celebrity match with Drew Bledsoe a few years ago. Now, Drew Bledsoe been retired. Like, been, been retired. Drew Bledsoe can still throw it from the 100 section on this end zone to the 100 section on the other end zone. Not not goal line to goal line. I'm talking about stands to stands. This sucker here. So it's like, do you want to go through the process of preparing? Do you want to go through the rigors of standing here? Now you're 48 years old, whatever, and somebody hits you. That happens. You get that happens eight times a Sunday. Are you going to be that guy? And most of those guys with those fat, full bank accounts like a Tom Brady get to a certain point where they don't want to climb that mountain anymore. But will he come back? You own part of the Raiders, like you said. It's a convenient pool just to say, hey, Tom, in spot duty. But I really think Tom Brady is going to relax this year. He already got the huge Fox contract lined up. Like, I don't even think it's about legacy tainting. It's just like, why go out there when you know for a fact that your best football is behind you? And Tom Brady, that first year in Tampa was the last little energy we're going to see from that life. The rest of Tom Brady is going to be flatlined in terms of production. He should just stick to the script, retire, year off, and then go get that Fox money. And I'm with you on that too because, I mean, if you – 
if you let's say if you're Tom Brady, you want to win, right? The Raiders are not in position to win anything right now, and especially with that offensive line. That offensive line is garbage. They've done nothing oh. with that. So, Mr. Statue is going to get honor? wrecked behind that. May line. I object? <laughs> May I object, Your Honor? Your Honor. Yeah. Um, see, that's right. not the ego of an athlete, let alone a goat. A goat says basically, like you ever get those cheap pancake mix, and all they say is just add water. And everything else is good. And like you're like, what the hell's in here? Where the egg at? It's like it already built in, right? All you gotta do is add water, right? Tom Brady, trust me, no matter what team it is, what's the worst team? Houston, just add Brady. <laughs> Vegas, just add Brady. Dog, me, me, me. You just add me. We're gonna be a better defense. It's that simple. Like that's the point. So never look at it like you said, Mikey P. Then you start breaking out the whole line and. They're ranked on offense. They're no running game. She just at Brady. Fair point. There's a reason they <laughs> call him the goat. But yeah. moving on, okay? So there's another yeah. report that we have to address that once came up last season where the Eagles were rumored to want to get a different quarterback besides Jalen Hurts. This was before he had this amazing MVP caliber season, led him to the Super Bowl and lost, okay? But before that, there was rumor they were interested in Deshaun Watson. They were interested in Russell Wilson. Okay? So fast forward to now. The report is that the Eagles reportedly had a deal, quote, basically done to acquire Russell Wilson from the Seahawks before last year. However, Russ nixed the deal. The rest is history. He went to the Broncos after that. So this is a game of what if. What if the Eagles... And the Seahawks made this deal. And they look at it from both ends there, okay? Oh, man. Let me say one thing. Bombshell. As an Eagle, I know as an Eagles fan, you are Mikey P. I know you glad as hell, Russell Wilson. Finally, <laughs> he said, never mind what? to y'all, right? Well, he, he time out. You time out. Yeah, yeah. Can I call time out? Yeah. Prior What's to up? this past year, I was like, I was like the biggest Russell Wilson stand there is. And then he, he really, uh, Messed me up this year, but oh man, I am obviously satisfied with Jalen Hurts at the moment. Yeah, hey, look, 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 some been leaking. Like for me, Russell Wilson. I think a lot of <laughs> analysts actually were pointing out the last two, three years we've been like he leaking, y'all. He leaking, and it wasn't just in production. So I got off that wagon fully a few years ago, and then I saw it just crash, and hopefully not burn, but it certainly crashed last year. This year, if he doesn't do well under Sean Payton, it burns. So if Russell Wilson was in Philadelphia, one, they wouldn't have made it to the Super Bowl. Facts. Not the way he was playing and not the way he was leading. Remember, it wasn't just Jalen Hurts' production. This is a grown man, y'all. This dude even checks his coach. Every single week, you can see him looking at the coach like, that's real immature of you, dog. Like, why are you screaming? Why are you yelling? Like, relax. Like, I've seen too many clips of him just sitting there being the most mature on the sideline. Russell Wilson doesn't convey that. He tries to do that, but it doesn't come across from the teammates the same. So, Philly would have been worse. Denver, with that Super Bowl-ready roster that everyone was talking about when Russell arrived, would have been better. I don't think they would have represented the AFC because that's where Patrick Mahomes lives. But at the same time, you see that Denver would have been better, came up a little short, but Philly, we wouldn't even be talking about them in this way. Matter of fact, the way Philly fans are, they would have ran Russell ass out of there already. <laughs> yeah, me too, because I had to bite the bullet there. Um, that one hurt for sure for me, uh, you know, Russell Wilson, but – Jalen right, Hurts. One more, baby. Mikey, and let's um, get out of here. Go Come ahead. on, wake up. Wake so, up. One more. Let's hard get Hard knocks. NFL hard knocks. They still have not picked a team yet. They're down to four teams this year that are eligible, okay? So that's yeah. the Bears who already said they did not want to do it. The Saints, the Jets, and the Commanders, they announced it last March last year, so they're a little late. Who do you think it should be? I think it's an obvious choice, but I'll let you decide. Bears, um, Saints, Jets, Commanders. And then remember, they had an in-season version, too. So I guess if you want to pick two teams, feel free. Oh, this is easy. This is easy. One is the Jets. Two, 
This show has jumped the shark, as they say. You remember Happy Days way back in the day? Sunday, Monday, Happy Days. Tuesday, Wednesday, Happy Days. And there was an episode where they had the Fonzie, I guess, or somebody in there, jump the shark. And once that happened in TV programming, they basically saying, your best days behind you. This show is tapped. I, I can't lie. If y'all watching Hard Knocks still, good. I'm proud of you. It was always tough for me to watch in the beginning because it wasn't necessarily training camp. They kept showing the stars who were a little distant, and then they will find some middle or lower rung player that they will attach to and just love his story and then get everybody all pulling for him and then his ass get cut. And I was like, well, that's not how it felt at training camp, but that's a great way to make a movie or a show about it. Training camp, all they had to do was put a camera in hell and just say, all right, this is what training camp is. <laughs> hell. And they ain't show enough hell for me on the training camp. They were showing a little too much gloss in, in heaven. So it should be the Jets because Aaron Rodgers is there. I just want to see Aaron Rodgers walk around, give the camera the bird, walk around, just look around, look at all unvaccinated and everything. Just be him. I just want Aaron Rodgers to just be flippant and I will watch that. But other than that, I'm kind of tapped out on hard knocks. Talk to me, Mikey. If if it's going to be the Jets, let it be in season because if the season's crumbling or if the season's sky high, I mean, I would love to see those Seriously. reactions. But prior to the season, maybe you could do Saints. I don't know. Just because maybe there's no, some you new said hope obvious. You are the there. obvious choice. You, which one's your obvious I choice, know. you told me? The Jets are the obvious choice. Oh, okay. I would let them do preseason any season if it was up to me. But, you know, just saying. That's, love. That's all That's I got love. for today, though. I appreciate you, hey, Mikey we'll P. Why tomorrow. you representing that temple like that? Nobody goes to temple for real, right? Nobody. Oh, anybody. Wow. Wow. Uh, four years there. Jeez, long time ago. 2014 grad, and I worked under Matt Rule uh, for oh. a year in football ops. Prior to the NFL stint, he turned the whole program around. I didn't have anything to do with that, but I was there. What did he turn it around to do? Show his butt? Like, Tipple ain't good? What do you mean? Turn, what, <laughs> what, what, what? Well, Here you go. I'm going to turn around. Well, Here taking, you go, a, <laughs> taking a two-win program and turning it into a ten-win program, I would say, is pretty damn good. Hey, they have Mikey, fallen you know since, what? too. They, they have fallen on some hard times lately. So, Thank you. I was about hey, to say, do not, do you not stop the story. The ups. You got to rep them doing the ups and the downs. You know how it is. You got to be real. You, you said that the wrong way, Mikey. I appreciate you. You got to rep Temple through the downs and the downs, and then a little up, and then the downs again. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hey, appreciate up. you, big dog. Hey, nothing's worse than Temple football except Columbia football, so feel good about yourself, <laughs> Mikey P. We've had it bad, too, in our history. Appreciate you, brother. All right, y'all. Y'all know how we end every show with a Wiley-ism. That could be you instead of Mikey P. Boring me with Temple football, which no one cares about. Even the people with, where's Temple? Philly? Nobody cares about Temple football. Uh, I digress. If you play for Temple, I don't want to be there. All right, y'all. Let's talk about this Wileyism. Quote, a champion is someone who gets up when they can't. Now, when I first heard this Wileyism, I was like, where do I put that? It didn't punch me like I thought it should. A champion is someone who gets up when they can't. And then you got that late, that retro smack in the back of the head. I said, oh, the champion is the one who has the mindset that this looks impossible. This looks improbable. Nobody else is going to do it. No one else has led the way. There's no pioneer. There's no one to grab onto. There's no one that looks like me. There's no one that reflects who I am. And I'm still going to be the one that challenges myself to become that champion. We're all laying on the ground. We're all sitting there like we can't get up. I'm falling and I can't get up. We're all in that position, but the champion somehow, some way, finds a way to do it. They can. So find that in you, because you possess that power. It's in here though, y'all. It ain't by your circumstances. It's not by your resources. That power to activate those things around you has to start in here. So I love this because I've been down before like all of us and I've been the contender before challenging myself to try and go to Columbia, damn it. Challenging myself to try to go to the NFL, damn it. All those things, etc. 
just like you. And then you sit around and you start competing against other people in your head. Well, they're better than me. Well, I got them beat, but they know so-and-so. And And they were all contending for the same thing. And then sometimes you even tell yourself, man, I can't do that. I can't get that. But the champion is the one who gets up when they can't. So always remember that no matter when you start getting out of turn, out of pocket, start defeating yourself. If you want to win it, just like my little seven-year-old itty-bitty Baltimore Ravens did yesterday. Woo! 54-0 to in two playoff games. MJ had seven touchdowns out of eight. My boy was out there beasting, basking robins on their head. Always remember, a champion is someone who gets up when they can't. That'll do it for today's episode of Never Shut Up. Thank everybody for your viewership. You know what it is. Brings TV, Reese TV, membership, Wiley's World. Be a YouTube member for your boy. And I'm about to go out there and swing them. You know what they call me in golf? Mr. Four. Four! I can't wait for that. It's going to be fun. My DJ is better better than my golfing. Love y'all. See y'all tomorrow. Peace.